Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indusor Education. Um, we'll talk about gravitation. Um, in particular, we have already researched how um, gravitation, gravitational potential uh, looks like um, in some cases like uh, thin rod, uh, the ring, and, and the disk. Uh, today's lecture is about gravitational potential of um, a spherical thin shell. So it's like a ball, but nothing is in, inside. So everything, the mass, is uh, spread only around the surface. Now, this lecture is part of the course called Physics for Teen, uh, Teens, presented on unisor.com. Uh, on the same side, there is a prerequisite, Mass for Teens, which is uh, definitely a very needed uh, course of mathematics for this particular course of physics, because I'm using calculus and vector algebra all the time in physics. Now, um, if you found this lecture on YouTube or on any other source but unisor.com, I do recommend you actually to go to unisor.com rather, because it's a, it's a course, which means all lectures are logically connected, so there is a prerequisite to this particular lecture. I will use some results from the previous one. So it's, it's a course, so you have to really take it in, in, in logical steps, one after another. Um, now, the site is free, by the way, there are no advertisements, no um, uh, strings attached at all. So, let's start. We are talking about gravitational field of um, empty spherical shell. All right, so, um, obviously, as in all other cases, we will use integration. The only thing is, we have to really do it smartly. So our integration will be relatively simple and obviously I will use the previous uh, lectures results. Okay, so let's consider this is a spherical shell. Well, let me just put it this way. Now you see it's definitely um, a sphere. Now this is its center. Now obviously we will take the system of coordinates uh, where the uh, center of the sphere is origin of coordinates. This is the point of interest P. Right now consider it's outside of the shell, outside of this sphere. We will consider inside case separately after this one. Alright, so let's put some um, some dimensions. So consider the radius is R and uh, the distance OP is equal to H. Okay, now I am just thinking about how to break this, how to slice this particular um, spherical shell into pieces so I can reduce my problem to something which I already know. Primarily, I will use the ring uh, gravitational field in this case. So here is what I'm, um, what I'm proposing to do. Let's cut the sphere with um, infinite number of planes perpendicular to OP. Now, each one will um, cut a circle. Now, let's consider you have this circle. And uh, the center of this circle is, well, let's call it know, x, for instance. So the difference from O to x is, is x, if you wish. Now, um, what's important right now for me, and that's the way how I'm proposing to approach this problem, I would like to take as a, a variable this angle. Let's call it phi. So, whenever my angle is changing from 0 to pi, my cutting plane will be either on this side of the sphere or on that side of the sphere. So basically, whenever I'm 
changing my angle from zero to pi, my corresponding um, section plane will just move from, from right to left, completely from one pole to another pole. Now, let's increment um, my angle phi. So this is phi plus d phi. Now this is an infinitesimal increment of the angle and I have another uh, catching um, section. All right. So this angle is differential of phi. Now, um, what's in between these two planes? Well, if angle uh, d phi differential is infinitesimal, the thickness of this figure will be infinitesimally small, which means it will be basically a ring, right? Because this is my empty uh, spherical shell. So if I divide, if I cut it with a plane, I will have a circle and another circle. So what's in between these two circles? Well, a ring. A ring which has infinitesimal uh, thickness and obviously we can consider the uh, diameters of both rings since my angle d phi is infinitesimal so the diameter will be infinitesimally close to each other in value. Now let's recall well if this is a ring or I mean it's infinitesimally close to the ring, right? So I can I can use all, all the um, formulas which I have derived when I was talking um, about the, about the rings. Now, in case of a ring, I have a formula which I will put here. The gravitational potential, if you have a ring, and you have a distance to the point along the um, perpendicular to the plane of the uh, ring through its center if you have a distance um, h and you have the uh, radius of the ring r then it would be the formula which I have derived in the previous lecture this is a potential of a ring um, gravitational potential of the ring. So this is the ring, this is h, and this is r, and the mass is m. So this is the formula which I have derived for this particular case. Now, we have a different case obviously here. Well, let's start from the beginning. What is r? What is the radius of the ring? Well, the radius of the ring is the distance from here to here, which is r times sine. So instead of r, I should put r sine phi. Now, h is distance from here, from the center of the ring, to the point of interest. Now, from O to P is h, from O to x is r times cosine. So the difference between h and r cosine uh, phi, this is supposed to be instead of this h. So this is um, h minus r cosine phi. Now, what's m? m is the mass of the ring. Well, the mass of the ring is um, basically a differential because it's infinitesimally um, uh, thin and uh, I can find uh, this mass by basically checking what's the surface of the ring relative to the surface of the whole um, uh, spherical shell. So if I know the mass of the shell and I know the surface of this ring and divided by surface of the shell this is the ratio which I have to decrease. So what's my dm is equal to original m mass the entire spherical shell. Now I have to multiply by area 
of this ring and divide by area of the entire spherical shell. So what's the area of this ring? Well, it's a circumference times the length of this arch, which is circumference is, if I know the radius, which is r uh, sine pi, so the circumference is 2 pi r sine phi and what is the this particular arc well that's basically considering i know the uh, the angle differential of the angle d phi this would this would be r times d phi so r would be square and then d phi now this cancels so i have m sine phi d phi divided by 2. So this is the mass of my ring. Now I'm ready to substitute into this formula the mass. So this goes to here instead of this mass. So this is the formula for the ring of this type, but instead of R I should put this, instead of H I should put this, and instead of M I should put this. Okay, so let me write it down. Now, what will be the uh, result if I will substitute into this formula? This would be the gravitational potential of this infinitesimally thin ring which is actually a differential of gravitational potential because then I will have to integrate it for the whole uh, range of angle phi from 0 to pi right so this is equal to minus g instead of m I put this one m sine phi d phi square root instead of r r square sine square phi and instead of h it would be h minus r cosine cosine phi square so this is my infinitesimal gravitational potential of of this ring. Well, let's simplify it a little bit. So it's minus g m sine phi d phi divided by uh, if I will open this square would be h square minus 2r uh, 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 h r cosine plus r square cosine square, right? So I have r square sine square plus r square cosine square. r square would be um, outside of the parentheses. Inside would be sine square plus cosine square, which is 1. Which means uh, I will have square root of r square minus 2 h r cosine plus h square h square plus h square minus so r square plus r square sine and cosine square would be 1 h square here and minus h r cosine so this is my formula for differential of um, gravitational potential which to be exact is a function of phi obviously right so first we fix the angle phi then we cut one uh, um, uh, plane at angle phi, another phi plus d phi, and this would be my gravitational potential of this narrow 
ring. Now I have to integrate this thing, this formula, uh, by phi from 0 to pi, right? Okay, this is a, again, now we're talking about pure technicality. So just try to follow me. It's not really that difficult. It's really easy, actually. So, if I will do this integral from 0 to pi dv of phi. Now, this is kind of complicated, right? However, if you notice, if I will take um, this whole um, square root of something, and I, I will substitute, uh, by the way, I think I missed 2 here. I missed 2, yeah, that was 2. It was, it was 2 divided by 4. Right, sorry about that. Now, what I would like to do is to, to integrate that thing, I would like to um, make a simple substitution. Now, why did I do this? Because if I will differentiate it, what will I do by phi? Well, the derivative of a square root is 1 over 2 square roots of the same kind. Times derivative of the inner function. Inner function, this is constant, this is constant, so this is the only thing which is here, so it's minus 2hr. And derivative of a cosine is minus sine of phi. So I do it this one. Okay, now I can get rid of this. Cancel them out. So what do I see now? Well, this is basically exactly what I need. I need sine and I need this square root, etc. So I can definitely say that dy Um, divided by hr is equal to um, this part. Am I right? Um, dy, which is derivative of y uh, uh, times dy, it's uh, so derivative of y times dy. Let me do it this way. So dy. it's equal to times g phi, right? If my y is this function, then differential is equal to uh, derivative times differential of the argument. So I can say that I can substitute this piece, you see, this piece exactly the same. So dy divided by hr, let's put it this way, is equal to this. Correct? So now, if I would like to, uh, to, to integrate this, I can put integral, um, well, minus gm obviously is a constant. Minus gm is a constant. Now 2 is also a constant. So minus 1 over 2. Okay, then instead of this, I will 
have to put um, HR uh, again minus GM to HR that would be my factor minus GM over 2 and HR so whatever is left will be equal to dy am I right? which I have to integrate from when angle phi is equal to 0 to angle phi to equal to pi when it's 0 cosine is 1 so I have r square plus h square minus 2hr which is um, h mi minus r square and then the square root would be h minus r now remember h minus r because we're talking about the point outside of the sphere remember this is our sphere this is h and this is r now when cosine is equal to pi cosine of pi is minus one so it would be plus here so it's r plus h square and square root so it would be h plus r okay now as you see after this substitution my integral is actually trivial and that was the purpose as in many other cases in integration a good substitution solved the problem very easily so integral of dy is uh, what's the def uh, um, indefinite integral of dy is y plus uh, constant c so in this particular case I don't need this either. so in this particular case it's equal to minus gm divided by 2hr so it's y plus constant c from h minus r to h plus r well, obviously we can forget about C because it's a constant and it will cancel each other plus C minus C so upper minus GM 2HR times upper H plus R minus lower H minus R Now, this is uh, H cancel, so it's 2R. So instead of 2R and 2R here. So it cancels this as well. So I will have minus GM divided by H. As wh what's remarkable, actually, we have such a simple formula as a result. Not only that, if you have a point mass of mass M, and on a distance h you have a probe object where we would like to measure the gravitational potential remember it's equal to minus g m divided by h so for a point mass we have this formula and we have exactly the same formula for a shell uh, uh, where distance h is measured from the center of a shell so you see it's quite remarkable as I was saying it means that we can consider the gravitational field of the shell spherical shell in this particular case the same way as if the whole mass is concentrated in the center so whenever we are outside of the um, spherical shell we, we can consider this spherical shell actually to be um, a, 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 as good as a point as a point mass with all the mass concentrated in its center the gravitational field 
the gra gravitational potential at each, at each point outside of the shell will be exactly the same whether it's a shell or it's a uh, point mass with a mass concentrated in its center. That's why in many cases related to gravitation and something like uh, space exploration, etc., we also um, in many, many cases consider all these round planets as point masses. Granted, this is proven for a shell, not for a solid sphere. That would be the subject of the next lecture and you will see that the result will be exactly the same. However, for this particular lecture I have another continuation. Since we are talking about an empty spherical shell and we know what will be the gravitational potential outside of this shell, the question is what will be inside. Well, inside it's quite interesting actually. Uh, to tell you the truth, I was surprised myself when I knew the result. Okay, if you remember, um, our substitution was this. Mm. Yes, h square. Uh, minus 2hr cosine phi. That was our substitution. Now, and we were integrating from phi is equal to 0 to phi is equal to pi. Now, the problem is this is an arithmetic uh, square root, which means it's a positive value, and without any kind of a hesitation, I put as this limit h minus r. Why? Because h is greater than r, and if cosine of phi is equal to 1, for phi is equal to 0, cosine is equal to 1, I have r squared plus h squared minus h, uh, 2hr. And obviously it's r minus h squared, but if you will uh, uh, extract the square root, it would be absolute value of h minus r, which if h is greater than r is this. But what if h is smaller than r, when my um, point is inside this sphere, the distance from the center is less than the radius of the sphere. In this particular case, what would be then the value of uh, y when the cosine is equal to zero? Well, in this case, my absolute value of h minus r is actually equals to r minus h, not h minus r. Right? Because r, r is greater than h, so it's positive. Arithmetic uh, square root is always positive. And my in integral would be, instead of this, would be r minus h. So it would be r minus h here. So what happens here? R would be cancelled each other because it's plus and minus and this H would be with the plus so it would be 2H and it's 2H will be uh, cancelling out and R remains here. And what's remarkable about that? It's independent of H which means Wherever you are inside this spherical shell, no matter where you are, no matter what your h distance to a center is, the gravitational potential will be exactly the same. Now, why it's remarkable? Well, it's remarkable because if, it's, if, it, if gravitational potential is the same, it means that the force which acts on any probe object inside the spherical shell is equal to zero because what is the gravitational force if you remember it's it's related to uh, obviously the mass and derivative of the gravitational potential we spoke about this in one of the previous lecture and if gravitational potential is constant throughout uh, inside of the sphere 
then the derivative in any direction by x, by y, by z, whatever, on any direction, the change would be equal to zero. So, you know, what is derivative? It, it, it's, it's delta function divided by delta argument. If argument is the distance from the center and the function is constant, obviously the difference is equal to zero, the uh, derivative is equal to zero, and the force is equal to zero. So there is no gravitational force inside a spherical shell. That's what's very important. You will be basically in weightless position if you are inside that thing. Well, so we were considering two cases. One is outside, when you can basically replace the spherical shell with a point mass of the same mass, concentrated in the center. And uh, the second case, when you are inside the uh, spherical shell, in which case the potential will be exactly the same everywhere in all the points, from which follows that it's a weightless state. There is no gravitational, I mean, there is a gravitational force which is equal to zero, if you wish. So the, uh, the gravitational force is equal to zero inside this spherical shell. And obviously I will use this for the next lecture about solid sphere as an object which we are considering the gravitational field of. But that will be the next one. Now I do suggest you to read the notes for this lecture. Again, the notes are always um, uh, on the same uh, website where you can find the uh, the video of this lecture so you can watch the video you can read the notes notes are like a textbook that's it for today thank you very much and good luck